Hello everyone, welcome back to lecture 4 part 3 prefabs. What are prefabs? Prefabs are saved templates of game object. They keep all the components, settings, properties that you have added so you can just create a new instance and reuse it anytime. Now this is also good for scripting whenever you are writing a script and you just want to spawn, spawn an object you can just make it a prefab and spawn it. It's very simple to do, it's very easy so let's head back to Unity and explain how prefabs are created, how you can edit them, and how you can use them. Now back to Unity, in this scene we previously created in lecture 4 part 2 components object, which I don't need anymore so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. You can just select it and control, uh, sorry just delete, or you can just right click and delete. Now I had a cube before, remember the cube with the sphere, I hit it, so I'm going to unhide it right now, so I can create a prefab out of this one. Now you can see this one, this pre, uh, this um, this game object has two game objects, it's a nested game object with a sphere and a cube. And it also has a bunch of uh, components. Now let's say we want to use this multiple times. Instead of just con copying this object over and over again and just moving it, what we can do is basically create a prefab out of it. How to do it? It's very simple. Now let's go to the projects panel, assets, and let's right click, create, and choose a new folder. So I'm gonna call this one prefabs and I'm going to open it by double clicking on the prefabs folder. Now one way to do it is to click on the cube or the object that you want and you can just drag it and put it in the prefabs folder. Now it doesn't have to be a prefab folder, we just call it prefab to make things organized, but I'm gonna put it here and you can see now that it turned uh, to blue, meaning that this is a prefab. Now I can use this wherever I want. Basically, I just drag and drop this. As you can see here, you can just do it wherever you want. And all these settings are exactly the same. Now, there's one thing that you have to understand about prefabs, that whenever you create a prefab, it will just be an instance or a copy of the main object. So if you change one setting or a property in the main object it will, or any prefab, it will change it across all other prefabs. Now, for example, if I select the cube, for example, or anything, and I make it static, it asks you if you want to change the static flag first to all of the children, because we have a nested game object that has a sphere inside of it. Let's say yes, we want to do that. And now, you can see now that the other ones are not static. Like As you can see here, they're not static, it didn't change them, and if I select this cube right here, it's also not static. Now, to make it change across all other prefabs, what you have to do is you select the one that you changed and then you go to the overrides here and if you expand it, you can see here that it says cube sphere and it says revert all or apply all because we made some changes, we can now apply it to all of the prefabs. So if I click apply all and I select any of them, you can see that all of them are static now. Even the one that we have in the folder is static. Now, I'm not going to explain what static is, this is for later lecture, but this is just a an example of what prefabs are and how they change across all the other um, game objects in the, in the scene. Okay, so now instead of editing the prefab in the scene, what you can do is you can open the prefab in a separate view to edit it separately. How you can do that is by double clicking on the prefab in the project folder. So we have here cube in the prefabs, if I double click on it, it will open in a separate view. And now you can see here, we can move this however we want. And you can see it's moving in the game because this is basically changing the entire prefab that we created. Does that make sense now? And you can just go back here and any settings that you change will be applied to all of them, but you will have to save it. So you have to click here and click save whenever you, uh, whenever you change it, okay? Now this is one way. And if you wanna exit this view, you can, I think you can click on the scenes here, yeah? Or you can just click on this little um, left arrow right uh, here, top left corner. Okay. Now, if you are done, for example, if let's say you have this cube right here, this is cube three. I'm just gonna move it a little bit up. Okay. So let's say you are done with this one and you don't want it to be a prefab anymore. What you can do is you can select the cube, right click, go to prefab, and then just unpack completely and this will make it not a prefab anymore. And just to demonstrate this, if I open the prefab again, and if I 
move this, you can see here that it's only moving these three and it's not moving this one because we unpacked it and it's no longer a prefab. Now, when do you use a prefab? You use it whenever you have something like, for example, let's say a bench and the bench has anchors where which you can sit on. Um, and you don't want to always keep creating anchors. What you can do is just create a prefab out of that um, bench or if you have for example like walls with texture instead of applying the texture every time to the wall you can just create a prefab of the wall and you can just duplicate it or use it whatever you want it's like a modular assets right or a pack um uh, this is all for for the prefab we will explain later in our scripts but this is a very important topic to understand it makes everything easier for you um and if you notice something if 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 i go to the asset catalog even though Oh, I haven't logged in. But just to explain real quick, if you go to the asset catalog and install any asset, you're going to notice that the asset is actually prefab. And this is because assets that are in the catalog usually comes in a prefab because they are pre-made assets that you can just copy and use whenever you want. Now, I will see you in the next lecture, which is going to be about scripting. Don't panic. It's going to be a very easy lecture. So... I will see you in lecture four, part four.